want to go to the book of Galatians, the first chapter. Galatians, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 11, and then I'm going to read down to verse 24. We don't do this as too much of a custom, but I think we should. The Bible makes reference to it. Won't you stand as we read the word of God? Amen? Amen. If you're able to stand, I want you to stand as we read the word of God. I am coming from the King James Version for those of you that want to follow with us. Verse 11, Paul says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody say revelation. revelation. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited it, the Jews' religion, above, my, above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately, somebody say immediately. immediately. I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and began and returned again unto Damascus. That after three years, there's a coincidence there, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, having or saved, which means except chains, the, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lied not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, thank you, minister, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me and they glorify what God where in who me. me as you take your seat I want you to help me talk my sermon up to somebody and say these are the best, these are the best acts, acts of my God, of my God. these are the best, the best acts of my God so many wonderful things that God has done over the years of this earth as we know it. But today I want to talk about the best acts of my God. It's impossible, first and foremost, to grasp all of the marvelous things that God has done. But I want to express a few things that God has placed in our spirit. One of the first marvelous acts that God has done is God created the heavens and God created the earth. Yes. All of us would probably turn right away to the book of Genesis where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. What more could God do than create the heavens and the earth? That had to have been one of his greatest acts. An astronaut once declared that there was no heaven because they traveled as far as you could in space. And they looked out and they couldn't see heaven by sight. But I want you to know today they was only in the backyard of heaven. For a few months ago I showed you a video that taught us about the galaxy and the stars and the things that we can see with our naked eye, which is considered minute to the eyes 
a God. Yet, if you can walk from one side of the galaxy to the other, you'd only be halfway after about a million years. This must be one of the best acts of God. Many countries fighting over who is the most powerful here on earth. God's got worlds besides earth, but our God supersedes our imagination. And to think that this is the only world God has created has limited God himself. That's true. For he created the heavens, and he created the earth, and we need not to search any further, for this alone is a good act of God. Take a look at the earth, if you will, its vastness, its majesty, and its many mysteries. God took dry land and a desert, and he decorated it with plants like the cactus, and he looked at it and said, what beautiful things have I done. Yeah. You can travel across Canada and find out the beauty of God. You can go to Europe, you can go to Africa, you can even go to Antarctica, and there you will see the beauty of God. Why? Because God created the heavens Amen. and the earth. Have I got a witness here? Amen. God's creation can be unpredictable. We're trying to build a sand castle on the beach. A wave will come a few minutes later and wash it away. Yet God created what he created is stable, including the sun that has never needed repair or the moon that has never needed an electrician. Therefore, we would have to conclude that God creating the heavens and the earths was a true act of God. I wish you'd stay with me. It's not going to be boring in just a minute. If you went to Genesis 1 and 27, we'll find the second thing that I believe was a great act of God. Genesis 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The second thing of one of God's greatest acts is he created human beings. Oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we confuse human characteristics with the greatness of God. That's why we don't consider God to be that majestic. We try to make God just a little bigger than what we are ourselves. So we stop and take time and we think. We think about how to do things. We think about how we're going to plan this out. We think about how it's going to turn out after we've taken time. Yet everything that God does, God does in the present. So in other words, God doesn't have to stop and think. God, without thinking, said, let there be light. God, without thinking, said, here I created man. If it was up to God and we were supposed to be like him, we'd lose out because he might take too long to think. What if God was like that with us? Lord, would you please heal my body? And God says, wait a minute, let me... Lord, would you please give me a raise? I need more money. And God says, yes, but let me think. I'm so glad that God doesn't operate in a think pattern, but when God moves, God says, let, and it already is. Uh, yet, 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 everything that we know is present with God, and, and without thinking, God made man. Man who can put a baboon's heart into another human being and they live. Man who can create airplanes and cause them to fly. Man who can invent medicine that will ignore all other parts of the body and specifically work on the one that is ailing you. Man with the ability to think. Man with the ability to remember. Man with the ability to deal with difficulties and bring about 